I'm going to talk about some things that, that I have learned from developing my website on the Rules of Form, which is called Mark or Mark. Uh, it's all going to be rather elementary, uh, particularly in relation to William Brickens. Uh, <coughs> marvellous and exciting talk this morning uh, because I, uh, I, I like the, the Brecon axioms as you'll see. Uh, very quickly, what is my website about? First of all, I present the primary arithmetic by means of a kind of fairy tale about a woodcutter who each day has to cut down the trees that have been marked in the night by a mysterious high up forester. He has to figure out on pain of something horrible happening to him or his hens which trees are marked for destruction. Uh, so if a tree has a circle on it, that's straightforward. It has to be, it's for the job. Uh, and he gradually learns that if it has two circles on, uh, the tree is already marked, it's marked again, it's, it's for the job. But uh, it takes him a bit longer to figure out that if another circle has been put inside the circle, marking the mark, uh, then the mark isn't a mark anymore. It's, a, it's an unmarked tree and he has to leave it alone. Uh, so it gradually emerges that an essential thing about the mark is that it's, uh, the inside of the mark is empty, there's nothing there. And if there is something there, then it's not a mark. Okay, and uh, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, and secondly, I give a presentation of the, the primary algebra, which is what I'm going to come back to. Uh, including a, a flash program that you can play around with on the, on the website to practice your moves in the primary algebra. Uh, and then there's a kind of rather experimental bit on something called the calculus of circles, letters and subscripts, which is my way of making the primary algebra more complicated, uh, less uh, perfect. Uh, the point being that this calculus can then be interpreted as the logic of predicates and quantifies things like for all x and there is an x such and such and such. However, I'm uh, not going to talk about that, I'm just going to stick to the primary algebra. Now, in Laws of Form, it's, it's introduced as a calculus taken out of the calculus, that is, out of the primary arithmetic. And the essential idea is that each letter can stand for, for an unknown value. It's a sort of placeholder for a mark, either for a mark or for, or for no mark. Uh, with the proviso that if the same letter pops up in different places, then it always it has the same value. Uh, and this is all rather like the ordinary algebra that we learn in school to do with numbers. But in this talk, I want to emphasise that this game of algebra, uh, even if it arises out of the, the primary arithmetic, and where I've just said, as an independent existence on its own terms. Uh, <coughs> to emphasise this, I'm going, to, I'm going to refer to it as the CL calculus, the, the calculus of circles and letters. So it's the same thing as the primary algebra, just a different name. The essential thing here is that the letters adjust themselves. They're not standing standing for anything else. 
and as I, by the way, they don't obviously really have to be letters, but, but as we go on we'll see what the essential properties they have to have are. So the idea of my talk is a, is a sort of experiment by denying ourselves the, the obvious ready-to-hand interpretation of the primary algebra in terms of these values. Uh, we're going to try and encourage other meanings to emerge, to try and coax different meanings out of what's going on. So, how do, how do we play the game? We work with CL expressions, circle and letter expressions, uh, which are defined like this. Each one is based on a skeleton of circles. And throughout the circles, wherever you like, you, uh, you, you sprinkle the letters around. And it's important to note that you might choose to have no circles at all, just letters. Or you might choose to have just letters, no circles. Or you might, of course, choose to have nothing at all. Once you've got your expressions, you play around, you, you, you play around with transforming them, one into the other, and uh, you have these allowed transformations which were built up out of elementary moves or axioms or initial equations, whatever you like to call them, for which there are various choices. Firstly, there's the choice in laws of form, uh, with the uh, initial equations I'll refer to as J1 and J2. Uh, I've written it with a capital, capital letters. The point here being that capital A can stand for any express any CL expression. Uh, so the rule says, and, oh, and the other thing is that this transformation can can happen anywhere inside a bigger uh, bigger expression. Uh, Okay, I think I think you probably probably all all know that, and uh, J one and J two are sort of developed in laws of form and uh, with lots of consequences and so on. Uh, another possibility is that you just start with one initial equation, uh, which looks like that, and ra rather amazingly. Uh, you can do everything just from that. Uh, secondly, you can do it from this alternative form. Uh, you can read all about this in a paper by Lou Kaufman. That's, that's where I learned, learned about it anyway. The third starting place is the three Bricken initials, which uh, William mm -hmm talked about this morning and these these are the ones I like there are more of them obviously but they're, they're sort of beautifully simple and for my purposes they were possible to sort of uh, realise in my, my programme for, for playing around with these things uh, and I have my idiosyncratic names for them, I'm afraid. I, I call the, the first one unwrap when it's going from left to right. And wrap when you go the other way. Uh, second one is uh, undelete when you go from left to right. Delete when you go from right to left. And the third I call copy. A is copied inside the circle or uncopy. Uh, just 
I, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with this, but just in case. You can apply unwrap wherever there are two circles surrounding something and nothing in the gap between them. So that, that's what the thing on the right is meant to indicate, nothing in the gap. So here we have uh, Does that come up great? I can't actually see from this angle. Uh, if there's nothing in between the circles, you can remove them. Okay. Uh, undelete is the incredible one, because given an empty circle, you can produce anything out of it. Including any expression. with letters or dogs. Uh, and this always reminds me of, of this picture which I think came into one of Stephen Hawking's papers. Uh, I haven't managed to find the illustration. Uh, he says if you wait around long, long enough near a black hole, it, it, it can produce anything. And most of the time it will just produce... Uh, electrons or photons and not very many of them, of them. But if you wait around for a long, long time, black hole will produce a working TV set, he says. <laughs> all, all the complete works of William Shakespeare, apparently. And, and of course, there's no difficulty throwing things into a black hole. You can throw anything into a black hole. That's the, the delete. Uh, copy, we're going to copy the expression A, whatever it is, A could be anything, and go just one deep, and then once it's got into that place, it can then copy itself further down, and then if you like, you can uncopy it from there into there. So in other words, A has managed to copy itself to a deeper level and A can copy itself to, to any level, as, uh, which uh, William calls permeation, I think. Pervasion. Pervasion, pervasion. Well, you can't, not allowed to copy it outside the boundary of the space where A is. So, uh, Uh, okay, just a little bit of practice using the written initials. I'm going to transform the void expression into the thing with P and, and uh, P in a, in a circle. First thing is to kind of think about the void and think about this little piece of it. Thinking of it, you decide to wrap it then you decide to do an undelete from the uh, black color in the middle. You choose to, to create P. And you copy P into the middle. And then you uh, forget about that bit you're thinking about. Ah, this is the same thing happening. Uh, in my uh, play area on the website. Let's do that again. So you wrap a bit of void, create a P, copy it into the middle, and there you are. Uh, my second uh, little exercise is uh, to prove a consequence which which I think William mentioned this morning as, as well. We start with something in a circle and we're going to produce something else out of it. So if it was an empty circle, no problem. If it's got, a, if it's got something in it, then you're a bit more restricted. But you can do this. Wrap up a bit of void. 
uh, emanate something an empty circle uh, that's black copy the circle dog into the cir empty circle unwrap it and uh, you've got circled black dog and you can remind yourself of this by saying to yourself if it's not a dog, then it's certainly not a black dog. I think you'll find that makes sense. And of course it could be a, a, certainly not a white dog or a, or a fierce dog or anything else. You have a couple of minutes if you want questions. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, perhaps I'll have to do with other questions. Uh, animation of the same thing happening. And once again, of course, we can all go to the website and, like, especially now that we're trained, yeah. we can play this with is, the software. Yes, yes, right. Black dog in reverse. This, this shows how dog in a circle can kill black dog. Eliminates it. Puff. Uh, I'll just try and get through this. So in that, that sort of situation, I say the expression that D in a circle can kill black dog in a circle, BD in a circle, but equally, as we saw to start with, D in a circle can produce BD in a circle. And in that circumstance, I say that the, the expression dog in a circle has the power of life and death over a black dog in a circle. It can either produce it or take it away. Uh, this is just a quick demonstration of the fact that if A has power of life and death over B, then B in a circle has power of life and death over A. So, we're going to, going to show how B in a circle can kill A in a circle. So you copy B in. Now A has power over B, which means it can eliminate it, even though it's to a lower depth. Pop. Now we'll miss out these other things about power and depth. Perhaps we'll finish on on this proof of the proof of J two using these ideas. Uh, so starting starting here, we copy R into those inner spaces. At this point, we kind of uh, sit back and think that we already know that R in a circle can kill R P R R Q. Right? Therefore, the other way round, if you put those two in a circle, they can kill R. Same thing. This is this is the same thing, but sort of expanded out into into elementary moves. <coughs> so now, now R is going to do a killing of those two things. tried in a rather <laughs> limited way to, to to bring out how one can sort of it's like it's it's like feeling a sort of meaning in what's going on in the CL calculus. These things 
sort of have power have power over each other and uh, imagination is how I, I, I was going to describe uh, sort of creating things uh, uh, yeah, I don't think I can explain that actually without the so I'm going to wrap up and we can have a couple minutes for, for discussion. Okay, yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. And it turns out that there are five um, uh, non-trivial single initials from which you can demonstrate the um, complete um, primary algebra, um, mm -hmm. of which you showed two. There, yep. there, there are another three, but yeah, they're, I, I they're, a, lot, they're a lot more complicated. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. In fact, there's an infinite number of single initials from which you can um, demonstrate the complete algebra. Um, but um, all but five of them are non-trivial. Oh, sorry, there, there are five non non trivial. The rest are the trivial variants on, on those okay. five. Yeah. Graham, when you classify your using the unmarked state, it's a loss of form. So, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 as regards the Robins, uh, which, which the original which, Robins yeah. didn't allow an unmarked state. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm using the unmarked state. Yeah, absolutely. You have to write it. I, uh, it's, it's, yeah. It's, there's a lot more to it. Book. Uh, design, but right. it, is a book, it is a book, yeah. <coughs> oh. <laughs> um, there, there feels something very biological in what you're doing. Oh, oh, good. And um, particularly the copying. See, I was talking to Lou earlier about um, endosymbiosis, what, you know, the, the idea of mitochondria that will form oh, yes. it's independent and then they find their way into the cell. Yes. Um, I don't know if that's possible with Spencer Brown's um, laws, is it? Is this something, that, is this particular to the Bricken method? Uh, can, we, can we arrive at that kind of situation where you, you actually find the thing that's reproduced or the, the elements are actually absorptions of something that was in the environment? Well, the generation is a, is a rule in, yeah. in the primary algebra okay. as well. Yes. It just doesn't make the nancy. Okay. Yes, you can you can go back from the laws of form initials to. Okay. In fact, their consequence is one, two, and three. I think. Yeah. Yes. Um, but can I ask about the killing or the, the power over? Yes. Yeah. That that's a choice, isn't it? That's that's a distinction that would be made by at, at some point. It's not it's not something that's in the logic. It's a, it's, it's a it's a cut. Is, is do you mean? Do you mean that you put, choose to put it in? You do some, something, there's a choice to be made as to whether the dog gets killed or the dog, you know? Uh, I was using it, I mean, you, you kept, that is a possible development. Here I was just saying that there are some expressions which have power over other expressions, yeah. and, and that's in the, it, the it, logic. It, I think it, it comes back to this issue of power and, um, you know, maybe, even politics of this kind of <coughs> way that that can be expressed. Yeah, well, you, say, you can certainly take this and then uh, go on to sort of further interpretations like that and choices. Yeah. All right. Uh, there's another question back here, and then we'll, we'll make this the last question. Thank you, George. Yeah. The slide you showed about dog is not that dog. Did that have an if in front of it? And if so, why? Or was it just black dog? Is no, there was no, dog? there was no if. No, no these, if. No, these. Thank you. If I understand you correctly, given given a a not dog. Well, that was a very quick one, so we could wrap it up now and move on to our next speaker.
So thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Thank you.